India is 21. Why does India is 21 talk about this functional currency then? Guys, you need to understand when I talk about functional currency, functional currency is a currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. Guys, India is 21 is significantly different from AS11, is what I'm saying. I'm saying AS11, which was a comparable standard, just spoke about home currencies and foreign currencies. But on the other hand, when it came to India S21, I showed a distinction between functional currency, presentation currency, and foreign currency. So there, the home currency concept itself is removed. Why is the concept of home currency removed? Because here we need to understand the concept of globalization's impact on Indies. What is happening on today's day? There are many such enterprises which are established in India but predominantly are serving the interest of public outside India. So their customer sources are basically outside India. They are actually reporting to the foreign currency itself. Uh, they are reporting to the foreign entity itself. In Hyderabad, you have a company called Synchrony. Synchrony is basically providing a credit card transaction services to people of US. So basically what is happening? The, the country in which they are actually operating is India, but the economy, economic environment in, their, in which they principally operate is in US. So an Indian enterprise, instead of having a functional currency in rupee terms, can have a functional currency in dollar terms. Because their primary currency of econ economic environment or economic transactions is denominated predominantly in dollars. So it is not affected by rupee terms. That is fundamentally why you get this concept of functional currency and the elimination of the concept of home currency out there. Clear? So whenever I talk about functional currency, it is eliminating the concept of home currency and is saying wherever your enterprise is, irrespective of the country in which you reside, irrespective of the country in which you have a registered office, what is the primary economic environment in which you operate? I operate primarily in US. My operations are directed to the people of US. So therefore, the economic environment in which I operate is the US and the currency of that primary economic environment is a dollar. Therefore, functional currency should be considered as a dollar for clear. So that is the reason why India S21 has a high significance and a significant difference from what we earlier discussed as a part of AS11. So the standard deals with predominantly three parts. The first part which deals with foreign currency transaction, second part dealing with foreign operation, third one dealing with translation into presentation currency. So now foreign operations was very similar and foreign, foreign currency transaction is very similar to what we dealt under AS11. But this third one has come into picture that is translation into presentation currency. Why did this prop up now? Why is there a difference between a reporting currency and a presentation, uh, your functional currency and your reporting currency? Because you might be basically in a, uh, you know, uh, conducting your operations in India. Your functional currency is the currency in which you have primary economic environment, which is a rupee term. But I'm a US subsidy. So my holding company does not understand money terms in rupee. So I wanted to prepare my financial statements in, in dollars so that it is communicable to them so that they understand it better. So therefore, in such cases, I select, I select a presentation currency. Functional currency, can I select? I don't select for a present, uh, functional currency because functional currency is determined. They are not selected. Presentation currency is selected by the management. Functional currency is determined based on the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. Clear? What is a foreign currency then? Any currency other than the functional currency is considered as a foreign currency. Let's see. So the currency is broken down into three parts. Functional currency, foreign currency and presentation currency. What is the functional currency? The currency of primary economic environment in which the entity operates is called as functional currency. What is a foreign currency? Anything other than this functional currency is called as a foreign currency. 
what is presentation currency the currency in which my financial statements are prepared it is a choice of the management functional currency is never a choice it is not a choice it is the primary economic environment in which the entity operates which determine what is the functional currency so let's talk about determination of functional currency there are certain factors which i have to consider in determining a functional currency what are those factors number one the currency which influences the sale price of goods and services the that is the currency in which the sale occurs or the sale price is denominated or the sale is settled the transaction is settled this currency is predominantly called as functional currency the currency which influences the sale price of goods and services that is the price in which or the currency in which the sale price is quoted or settled can be considered as my functional currency number one number two the currency of the country whose competitive forces and regulation determine the sale price of the goods and services so where i gave you the example of synchrony they predominantly operate in the us the us expects the entire uh, uh, transactions to be denominated in dollars the country has competitive forces and regulations which determine that the sale price should be denominated in a particular currency therefore such currency becomes my functional currency number 3 the currency which influences labor material and other cost of providing the goods and services number 4 the currency in which the funds for financial activities or financing activities are being generated that currency in which i raise a debt the currency in which i issue shares these are currency in which financing activities are raising funds from which currency can be called as a functional currency the currency in which the receipts from operating activities are usually retained i have a tendency of receiving a rupee but i convert it into dollars and store it in dollars because i have payments in dollars therefore a dollar becomes a functional currency even though i am receiving a rupee term therefore it should be considered as a functional currency five things the currency which influences the sale price of the good number 2 the currency of the country whose competitive forces and regulations determine the sale price of the good or a service currency which influences labor material and other cost currency in which funds from financing activities are generated and currency in which the receipts from operating activities are generally retained clear now should all the conditions be satisfied to determine functional currency not necessary if substantial factors are satisfied you can determine functional currency so functional currency of an enterprise is determined based on substantial satisfaction of factors considered for determination clear my items in financial statements are generally broken down into two parts financial statements are balance sheet and pnl predominantly under balance sheet i have real accounts and personal accounts while under pnl i have nominal accounts for the purpose of india s21 i am giving different names to it my real accounts for the purpose of india s21 will now be called as non monetary items for the purpose of india s21 i am calling these real accounts as non monetary items my personal accounts are called as monetary items finally my nominal items there is no change in the name i let them be nominal items itself now what is this monetary items and non monetary items and how do i define them monetary items are items which can be either realized or paid settled in cash either i am receiving or paying in a fixed sum of money is called as monetary item example cash in hand cash at bank your uh, debt hours bills receivable advances deposits are monetary assets monetary liabilities loans credit hours bills payable outstanding expenses all these are monetary items which are settled by payment of a fixed sum of money what are real accounts real accounts which are considered as non monetary in nature they are not settled or not realized in fixed sum of money best example your property plant and equipment intangible assets investments inventory these are further classified into two types 
those non monetary items which are carried at historic cost and those non monetary items which are carried at fair value like you remember under index 16 now we said either you can go as per cost approach or you can go as per revaluation approach when i apply revaluation approach i'll have to measure the asset at its fair value so whenever you are classifying the non monetary assets these non monetary assets are also classified again into two, two parts one is non monetary assets carried at historic cost and non monetary assets carried at fair value clear first thing what is a foreign currency transaction what do you mean by a foreign currency transaction first any transaction which is denominated in a foreign currency is called as a foreign currency transaction can you give me some examples i purchased my machinery from germany in euro is a foreign currency transaction for an indian enterprise i am selling a good or a service to us which is denominated in dollars to an indian enterprise such sale of good or a service to us in dollars can be considered as a foreign currency transaction i raised debt from australia in australian dollar because the dollar borrowing rate borrowing rate in in australia was cheaper which is a foreign currency transaction so taking a loan in foreign currency or repaying the loan in foreign currency is also a foreign currency transaction so these are classic examples of foreign currency transaction where a transaction is denominated in a currency which is other than the reporting uh, with uh, other than the functional currency is called as a foreign currency transaction whenever i have a foreign currency transaction then how do i recognize the transaction for example i purchased a machinery in U in euro and let's say the purchase price of the machinery is 100 million 100000 euros 100000 is one line how do you recognize the entry machinery account debit to supplier how much amount 1 lakh euro or 100000 euro but all your journal entries above are in rupees how can you have this journal entry in euro terms i have to convert this euro into rupee terms therefore a foreign currency transaction has to be converted into functional currency for the purpose of accounting for the purpose of recording a journal entry for the purpose of posting it into a ledger it requires me to record the transaction in functional currency so the foreign currency transaction has to get translated into functional currency this is the concept that we're going to discuss as the first part of india 21 when we deal with foreign currency transaction remember at the first date of recognition initial recognition that occurs on the date of transaction i will translate this foreign currency tra transaction into functional currency using the exchange rate on date of transaction i'm saying i'll initially recognize the transaction on the date of transaction using the exchange rate applicable on the date of transaction clear so if i have purchased a for uh, a machinery from germany in euro then in such cases i will apply the exchange rate on the date of acquisition let's say acquisition happened on 15th august 2020 then what do i do machinery account debit to supplier 100000 euros multiplied by exchange rate of euro on 15th august but let's say this amount payable to the supplier is after one year. So what happened on 31st March 2021, I have to close my books of accounts for the year 2021. On such day, I need to go for subsequent measurement, a subsequent recognition. What do you subsequently recognize? I subsequently recognize only monetary items. Non-monetary items, I will not subsequently recognize. If you remember the transaction, what was the transaction recorded as? Machinery account debit to supplier. Machinery account, it is a real account, which is non-monetary in nature. Either it could be carried at historic cost or it could be measured at fair value. Forget about that concept. But ultimately, it is a non-monetary item. No subsequent recognition should happen. But I wrote machinery account debit to supplier. Supplier is a creditor. He should be settled by payment of fixed sum of money 
therefore he is a monetary item such monetary items should be subsequently recognized on balance sheet date on the balance sheet date i'll have to use a closing rate for translation of the monetary item what is a closing rate closing rate is the exchange rate on date of balance sheet let's say when i initially recognized the transaction on 15th august 2020 the value of euro was 80 rupees per uh, 80 rupees per euro therefore 80 rupees into 1 lakh i recognized the transaction machinery account debit to supplier for 80 lakhs as i came on to the balance sheet date on 31st of march now the supplier's account which is showing at 80 80 lakhs has to be restated based on the exchange rate on the date of balance sheet let's say the closing rate on the date of balance sheet was 82 so the supplier's value is 1 lakh into 82 82 lakhs and not 80 lakhs therefore the supplier that is a liability which you are showing has to be restated to 82 lakhs that means i'll have to credit the supplier by 2 lakhs extra then what do i debit can i debit the machinery i can't debit the machinery because machinery is a non-monetary item it should not be subsequently measured then what should i debit in such cases the transfer of the debit should happen to pnl i will recognize it as an exchange loss to be transferred to pnl because there is an increase in the value of liability therefore it is a loss so on the balance sheet date i will recognize the entry as pnl account debit to supplier for 2 lakhs because the exchange rate on balance sheet date that is your closing rate today is 82. Let's say we went up to 15th of August again. 15th August 2021, I am settling the transaction today. My settlement happened at 81 rupee per dollar. So what is the entry that you pass? Supplier account debit to bank, 81 rupee per euro, 81 into 1 lakh, 81 lakhs. But the supplier account was having a credit balance of how much? 82 lakhs. 80 lakhs recorded on the date of transaction. 2 lakhs recorded on balance sheet date. That 1 lakh is a reduction in liability because of a fall in exchange rate. Therefore, I will have to make sure that the supplier's credit balance of 1 lakh should be written off. So, I will write supplier account debit 1 lakh because of reduction in the value of euro to p and L. This exchange difference arising due to subsequent recognition or subsequent measurement of monetary items should always be resulting in gain or loss. Such gain or loss resulting from a change in exchange rate should be transferred to PNL. Clear? Concept did you get it? Remember, there is one exception. He says, if the closing rate is unrealistic and you don't expect the enterprise does not expect the transaction to be settled at a closing rate. I don't expect the transaction to be settled at closing rate. In such situation, instead of considering the closing rate, you can consider the rate at which the transaction is expected to be settled. Can you give me an example? Why does this happen? Transaction happened on 15th August when the euro was 80 rupees. Suddenly, there was a crisis in Europe and the closing rate has come down to 65. On balance sheet date, it became 65. I know it is only a temporary uh, fall in the value of Euro. I know Euro is a much stronger currency. I know that the transaction will not be settled at 65 because when the fa amount falls due on 15th of August 2021, I know that the, dollar will the Euro will appreciate again. So therefore, on that day of balance sheet date, I will not recognize the supplier's account at 65 rupees. Instead of taking 65, I will assume a rate at which I am expected to settle the transaction. Let's say I am expecting that the euro value will bounce back, the recovery is already in progress and I am expecting the euro to settle down at 75 rupees, which could be the possible value even on 15th August when I intend to settle the transaction. Therefore, instead of considering 65, I will consider 75 because your closing rate is unrealistic and I don't expect settlement to happen at that closing rate. Clear? It's an unusual situation guys, but still you need to remember that this paragraph exists within India's 21 
So therefore, is it compulsory to take closing rate always? Not necessary. If the closing rate is unrealistic, then you can take the rate at which the transaction is expected to be settled for the purpose of translating your monetary item on a balance sheet date. This will bring us to the end of the first concept of India S21, which deals with foreign currency transaction. Clear? Yes, guys, so going into the next part of the standard of India S21, which deals with foreign operation. What is a foreign operation and what do you mean by a foreign operation? A foreign operation basically means that I am an enterprise somewhere in India, 
but I have a branch or a subsidiary or any other form of operations being running in outside India. Let's say I have a branch in US or a branch in US in UK or I have a branch in Australia. And that branch is also performing its operations. Then it will be called as foreign operation. Now, why is this concept of foreign operation so important and why should I deal it under India S21? Remember, when I prepare financial statements of the enterprise, then financial statements of the enterprise should be prepared on a consolidated basis with all the subsidiaries. Should be presented or should be presented for all the branches put together. You have to add all the branches. Then only you will be able to prepare one, one set of financial statements for the enterprise. But unfortunately, the branch which is situated outside India or the subsidiary which is situated outside India is performing operations or having a functional currency which is other than a rupee. You here sitting in India, your head office is presenting everything in rupee terms. There the branch of the subsidiary is presenting everything in other than rupee terms. How will you combine? How will you combine everything and to form one single financial statement? Can I add 1 lakh dollars plus 10 lakh rupees? Add. I can't add. So therefore, I have to make sure that even such foreign operation have to be translating their trial balance, their entire trial balance into rupee terms, into my functional currency of the home enterprise or the parent enterprise. This concept of translation of foreign operation trial balance into the home enterprise currency is called as foreign, foreign operations translation. It is dealt under India S21. So what is this translation of foreign operation? What are foreign operations? So what is the foreign operation we have seen? So what are you translating? You are translating the trial balance of the foreign operation into ex multiplying with the exchange rate to derive a fun uh, trial balance of foreign operations in functional currency. Why do you need that? Because I need to present one single set of financial statements for the enterprise. If it is a holding and subsidiary relationship, then I have to present consolidated financial statements. If it is a branch, then I have to combine the trial balance to present the financial statements of my enterprise. So to combine them, to consolidate them, you need to translate the foreign currency trial balance of the foreign operations by using certain exchange rates into, trans, into trial balance in functional currency. The question here under India S21 is what exchange rate? What is the exchange rate which I have to apply to translate the trial balance of foreign operation to derive a trial balance in functional currency? This is the exchange rates. For a non-monetary item which are real accounts and if they are carried at historic cost then I'll have to apply exchange rate a closing rate closing rate is exchange rate on balance sheet date but if these non-monetary items are carried at fair value where a fixed asset like property plant and equipment or intangible asset could be measured at fair value or inventory could be measured at fair value in such cases you have to apply the exchange rate on which you determine the fair value clear monetary items what are monetary items like i told you they are either realized or settled by fixed cash like personal accounts. In such cases, I'll apply a closing rate. Nominal items which are nothing but incomes, expenses, losses and gains. They have to be translated using average rate. What is average rate? Average rate is opening rate plus closing rate divided by 2. Now, let's say for example, I have a foreign operation. Okay. I have a foreign operation in London. What is the functional currency in London? Pound. Their functional currency is pound. Let's say for example, I have drafted a trial balance. All my functional currency trial balances are in pound zone.
let's say there is an item A, B, C, whatever it is. Your trial balance is finally tally. Now, what are you doing? Now, I'm translating this into INR. So, for translation, what did you do? These debits and credits, they are multiplied with certain exchange rate. So, what happened? This item A, I multiplied with an exchange rate ER1. This B, I translated using exchange rate ER2. This C, I applied some other exchange rate ER3. Now, in this case, how will your foreign currency trial balance tally? After translation into INR, your foreign currency trial balance will not tally. Here, the total is not the same. Therefore, it's always a difference which arises. If it tallies, it's pure coincidence, guys, and nothing else. Pure coincidence. Generally, it does not tally. There is some difference which arises. What about this difference? What should I do with this difference? This difference which arises on translation of foreign operation into functional currency of the parent enterprise, this difference should be transferred to another reserve called as FCTR. I'll have to transfer it to a reserve called as FCTR. Foreign Currency Translation Reserve. You can also call it as Foreign Currency Translation Adjustment, FCTA. But general sequence, we use the word FCTR. Clear? That will bring us to the end of discussion on foreign operations. Remember guys, if I go into the concept of India's 110, which is consolidation, your India's 110 says, your parent and the subsidiary need not have the same balance sheet dates. Consolidation is probable even if even if the difference between the two reporting dates of parent enterprise and subsidiary are not separated by more than three months. If the difference between the reporting date of the subsidiary and the reporting date of the parent enterprise is only three months, you can consolidate. If it is beyond three months, then the subsidiary's financial statement should be prepared or redrafted again on the date of parent enterprise closing its financials. Okay, let's say it is exactly three months. Let's say your foreign operations financial statements are ending on 31st of December, while your parent enterprise financial statements are ending on 31st of March. Difference is only three months, so it is absolutely fine. Then when I translate this foreign operation using at exchange rate, then what should be the closing rate? Should the closing rate be considered as exchange rate of balance sheet date of the parent enterprise? Or should it be considered as exchange rate or balance sheet date of foreign operation? The answer is it should be considered as the exchange rate on the balance sheet date of the foreign operation. Therefore, in this given example, 31st December will be considered as the exchange rate on balance sheet date and not 31st March. Clear? Uh, what happens when I dispose of a foreign operation? Dispose means I sell out the division or I completely shut down those foreign operation. In such case, what happens? If there's a complete disposal, that means it was a subsidiary. I sold out all the shares in the subsidiary to another enterprise. In such cases, whatever FCTR has already been accumulated, Every year I kept on accumulating the FCTR due to the differences which are arising on translation. So all those accumulated FCTR should be transferred to PNL, either to the credit of PNL or debit of PNL, depend up, depending upon the balance in FCTR account. But if there is a partial disposal, partial disposal means only in part. So subsidiary, I had 80% shares, I sold 20%. So proportionate disposal or uh, a fr fractional disposal happened, but even after the fractional disposal, I still control 60%. It is still my subsidiary. 
in such situations where the controlling interest is retained, proportionate FCTR reserve should be transferred to NCI, which is non-controlling interest. This concept of non-controlling interest will emerge under India's 110. So I'm saying whatever FCTR has already been accumulated so far, on the date of partial disposal, if the controlling interest in the subsidiary is still retained, proportionate FCTR, that is 20 by 80, in the case of disposal of only 20%, so into 20 by 80 should be transferred to non-controlling interest. If I did a partial disposal in such a way that I don't have controlling interest anymore. I had 80% interest earlier. Today, I have sold 50% of the interest in the subsidiary. So my shareholding has come down to only 30%. So no longer controlling interest. In such cases where it has been dro dropped down to 30%, so proportionate FCTR should be transferred to PNL. That means total FCTR into 50 by 80 should be transferred to the credit or debit of PNL depending upon what is the balance in FCTR. So what am I saying? Complete disposal, full FCTR transfer to PNL. Partial disposal, but no controlling interest. Proportionate FCTR you transfer to PNL. Partial disposal, but I am still having controlling interest in the subsidiary. In such cases, the proportionate FCTR should be transferred to NCI or non-controlling interest and no longer to PNL. Clear? Now comes this concept of presentation currency. What did I say? Presentation currency is the choice of management. The management can choose to present its financial statements in a particular currency. Functional currency is not management choice. It is based on the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. So it is determined. It is not assumed. It is not selected. It is not the choice of management. But presentation currency is the choice of management. If your functional currency is different from presentation currency, your entire trial balance until the date of preparing financial statements are always denominated in functional currency. You reported everything in functional currency, your trial balance prepared in functional currency. But exactly on balance sheet date, I am preparing financial statements, but my financial statements are not in functional currency. You choose another currency for presenting your financial statements. I gave you the example. I am an Indian, I am an enterprise registered in India, conducting operations in India, but I am predominantly a subsidiary of a US company. US company is requesting me to prepare financial statements in dollars so that it will be easier for that fellow to consolidate. Fine. So I said, okay, fine. Let me select another presentation currency in dollars instead of a functional currency of a rupee. In such case, what happens? Whatever trial balance you already drafted in functional currency, such trial balance should be translated into foreign currency, so into presentation currency. What are the exchange rates applicable? The same exchange rates which you applied as far as your foreign operation is concerned. Non-monetary items carried at historic cost using closing rate. Non-monetary items carried at fair value using exchange rate on determination of fair value. Monetary items using closing rate. Nominal items using average rate. Again, difference does arise. Like we have already discussed earlier, when we have a translation of foreign operation, there will be a difference. Even when you translate it into presentation currency, there will be a difference. Such a difference, if it was a foreign operation, I transferred it to FCTR, foreign currency translation reserve. But if it is a translation to, into a presentation currency, FCTR concept does not arise. It should only be transferred to OCI, other comprehensive incomes. Clear? So instead of FCTR, I am taking it as OCI. Check above. It is the same exchange rates for translation of foreign operation into functional currency. I have transferred the differences to FCTR. If my functional currency is not the same as presentation currency, I will apply same exchange rates. But the difference is no longer transferred to FCTR, but it should be transferred to OCI. Clear?
One last paragraph before I end the standard in the S21. One last paragraph. For explaining this particular point, I'll have to draw some attention towards a paragraph of AS11. This paragraph is called as para 46A of AS11. Whereas your para 46A of AS11 was inserted into AS11 only in 2009. Until 2009, we had only para 46. That is the last paragraph of AS11. Subsequent to 2009, 31st March, this paragraph additionally was inserted into AS11, which is called as para 46A. What is this para 46A of AS11? I'll talk about the relevance of India's 21 here, but first understand what the AS is talking about. Accounting Standard 11 Para 46A says, if I have taken a long-term foreign currency borrowing, if I have taken a long-term foreign currency borrowing to acquire a non-monetary depreciable asset, I have taken a long-term foreign currency borrowing to purchase a fixed asset which is depreciable in nature. Fixed assets depreciable in nature are non-monetary items. No further translation is required. So keep it like that. But this foreign currency long-term borrowing is a monetary item. When I say it is a monetary item, like we have already discussed as a part of foreign currency transactions, they have to be translated using closing rate on each balance sheet date. So you translated the foreign currency borrowing using the closing rate and there was some exchange difference which arised. If I wouldn't talk about 46A, what you would have done, this exchange difference which has arise should be considered as an exchange gain or exchange loss and I will transfer it to PNA. Correct? But here 46A gives an option to the enterprise. He says, if you have taken the long-term foreign currency borrowing any time after 7th December 2006, any time after 7th December 2006, it was inserted in 2009, he is giving a retrospective reference starting from 7th December 2006. Don't ask me what is, what is the concept of 7th December 2006, but 2006 was the period when Lehman Brothers went down, Merlin's bank went down, AIG also was also uh, almost at the verge of declaring insolvency. There was a huge crisis in US where the borrowing rate came down very, very low. So. If I have taken a long term foreign currency borrowing any time after 7th December 2006, such foreign currency borrowing has been utilized towards purchasing a depreciable asset, then in such case, the exchange difference arising from translation of this borrowing on each balance sheet date, instead of charging off to PNL, it is an option of the enterprise to add it or deduct it from the cost of the asset. You can either charge it off to PNL or you can adjust it to the cost of the asset. Now, if it is a gain, I'll reduce it from the cost of the asset. If it is a loss, then I'll add it to the cost of the asset. Why? Why is one of the very beautiful questions, guys. What I can answer? Why can I answer? Yes, I can. I'll tell you. Around the same date, 7th December 2006, the dollar rate was 38 rupees. Dollar to rupee rate was 38 rupees. I'm talking about exactly 15 years back or 14 years back. By the time we touched 2009, already dollar was quoting more than 55 rupees. By the time we came to 2014, dollar was already trading at 70 plus rupees. That is where Raghuram Rajan came in. A little bit of standardization happened where dollar settled down between 68, 69, around that rate. So you need to understand a person who has borrowed dollars in 2006 at the rate of 38 rupees per dollar today in 2009 or 2010. Okay, I'm talking not today in 2009 or 2010 should have been repaying 60 rupees per dollar. That means the value of the borrowing has increased by almost 22 rupees per dollar. Imagine, imagine what sort of a loss am I talking about on today's date. If you look at what is it? Exchange differences between the opening and the closing, maximum 2 rupees or 2.5 rupees. But if I'm talking about 3 years difference, averaging to about 20 to rupees over 3 years, then imagine what kind of exchange loss is it. If such exchange loss get debited to PNL, 
it could have given a significant effect as far as your PNL is concerned. It could have a serious effect on the PNL. Whatever operating profit which I might have got would have completely got eroded because of the exchange loss. So that is the reason why the Companies Act has come up with Companies Accounting Standard Amendment Rules 2009, applicable starting from 31st March 2009 itself, where he has given a retrospective application from 7th December 2006 and said that in such situations, in a situation where you have a foreign currency borrowing and you have acquired a, a non-monetary depreciable asset, then the exchange gain or loss arising on subsequent measurement of the foreign currency borrowing of a foreign currency borrowing on a balance sheet date, such exchange gain or loss should be adjusted to the cost of the asset or can be charged off to PNL. Either of these options are given to the manager. But he put a particular condition saying that these options, these options, either you charge it off to PNL or capitalize it to the cost of the asset, are irrevocable option. If you select the option at a particular point of time, you will have to continue to apply that option throughout the period, even if tomorrow there is an exchange gain. Exchange last last year, I, I added to the cost of the asset. Exchange gain next year, sir, I don't want to add, sir, I'll credit it to the PNL. Not possible. Once you have applied a particular option, you will continue to exercise the same option over the lifetime until the borrowing is repaid. Clear? Now, what is the significance of para 46a of AS11 in case of India's 21? Is there a similar paragraph even under India's 21? No. There is no such similar paragraph in India's 21. But what India's 21 says is, if an enterprise has applied, if an enterprise has applied the provisions of para 46a to a foreign currency borrowing before the adoption of India's, before the adoption of India's, if an enterprise has already applied the provisions of para 46a of AS11 to a foreign currency borrowing, though such paragraph is not available under India's 21, you can continue to apply the treatment of para 46a of AS11. Even if the enterprise has translated into India's, even after they are adopting India's, even though such paragraph is not available under India's, if an enterprise has already had a foreign currency borrowing before, and they continue to follow a particular approach of 46A, then you can continue to apply the same approach even under India's. However, this option to apply such provisions of 46A is only valid until is only valid until the loan is repaid or the asset is disposed, whichever is earlier. Once the loan is repaid or the asset is disposed, you can no longer apply the provisions of para 46A. This is not a part of India's 21, but it is given as an ITFG, India's Transition Facilitation Group. So they have given this clarification saying that this provisions can apply. Look at what he is saying now. He says, if I have a long term foreign currency borrowing with which I have acquired a depreciable non monetary asset, your long term foreign currency borrowing is a monetary item subsequently measured using closing rate on balance sheet date. It resulted in an exchange gain or loss, which at the option 1 can be transferred to PNL or option 2 can be capitalized to the cost of this. The provisions of para 46A shall continue to apply in even in the case of India's, even though that paragraph is not corresponding paragraph is not applicable in India's 21, if the enterprise has already applied the choice or option under para 46A before the transition to India's. But this option of continuing to apply para 46A is available to the enterprise only until the borrowing is repaid or the asset is disposed, whichever is earlier. Once the borrowing is repaid, you can no longer take the benefit of para 46A. Clear? I hope I got it clear now. Can a functional currency change? Yes, sometimes there can be a change when there is a change in circumstances. In such cases, your monetary and non-monetary items should be translated using closing rate and the change in value of the item, be it monetary item or non-monetary items, should be considered as a change in historic cost. 
should be considered as a change in historic cost. So no exchange gain or loss should be considered. It should directly be considered as a change in historic cost and one. So option under 46A, one second, sir. Yeah, option under 46A is not applicable for companies which adopted NDS. However, the loan in foreign currency borrowing after adoption of 46A is not eligible to apply the provisions of para 46A. However, if an entity has already applied 46A prior to the application of NDS, they can continue to use the option until the loan is repaid or the asset is disposed. This is the last concept of para 46A or NDS 21 where the 46A is not applicable but still has a significance because there could be certain companies which are continuing to apply provisions of 46A even before the adoption of NDS. So this is only an interim relief. Once the loan gets repaid or the asset is disposed, the benefits of para 46A cannot be utilized by the enterprise any longer. Clear? That will bring us to the end of discussion on India's 21.